Hey, it's Dr. Gonzo and you're watching In a Nutshell. Today I wanted to talk to you about what it means to have a leaky mitral valve and what causes leaky mitral valves. So remember in the last episode I showed you what a normal mitral valve looks like. It's got two leaflets, chordae and papillary muscles. This is all a structure that we call the mitral valve apparatus. So anything that affects this part of the valve can result in a leaky mitral valve. So one condition that we know and it's common of causing a leaky mitral valve is what we call functional mitral regurgitation. And what happens in those cases is that rather than having nice straight walls where the mitral valve attaches to, these walls stretch out like this. Now the mitral valve so instead of being attached here, now has moved to get attached over here. The size of the valve hasn't changed, and therefore, there's a gap between the two kiss the kissing points of the valve. That means that rather than blood moving in this direction, now blood is able to move backwards, causing the mitral valve to leak. Another reason to have mitral insufficiency or a leaky mitral valve is that if one of these cords or all of the cords breaks or snaps. In that case, instead of a leaflet being like this nice and flat or a little bit uh, curved, the leaflet does one of these numbers. The tip actually, it's billowing or flapping back into the left atrium. Again, for the same mechan mechan mechanism, the blood doesn't move only in this direction, it starts regurgitating back because the tip of this leaflet is not kissing the other tip of the leaflet. And last but not least, imagine that you have something affecting these papillary muscles. If these papillary muscles are not working appropriately, then the valve can start flapping in the breeze as it does with degenerative mitral valve insufficiency. And that's a leaky mitral valve in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.